All right, welcome to our podcast on some basic punctuation things, and this is the use of italics, underlining, and quotation marks when writing. Let's go ahead and look at what we mean by this. Underlining and italics in your writing are the same thing. Here's why. When we used to handwrite things, we needed a way for certain words, titles, and objects to stand out. But when we were handwriting, there was no way to really do that. And so we would underline certain things for emphasis. Now we have computers. We've bypassed typewriters, of course, but we have computers that have the ability to italicize or to put that wiggly slant on certain words. Now this isn't just for random emphasis on certain things. There are specific rules and regulations about which words get underlined or italicized. Italicizing and underlining are the same thing. So if you are writing an academic paper and you come across one of these items that needs to stand out, then you are to use either one or the other. You don't underline and italicize. You use one or the other throughout your entire paper. Most times, it is most common to see italics. So to use you know, control I or command I if you're using the Mac to make those words italics. You could also certainly do that just by underlining them, but you cannot use both. So let's take a look at the items that do demand either underlining or italicizing, which again is the same level of importance, the same punctuation for these items. Pieces of sculpture will be italicized. Paintings such as the Mona Lisa or Starry Night or anything else that is the name of a painting will be italicized. The names of magazines will be italicized. Newsweek, Time, American Heritage, This Week in Review, whatever the magazine is, Skateboarder, Thrasher, Breakdancer, whatever it is, is going to get italicized. The names of TV shows will be italicized. The Biggest Loser, Desperate Housewives, Family Guy, Friends, Scrubs. Those are the names of the shows. And so those TV show titles will get italicized. The names of albums. And I know we don't use records anymore, but the names of CDs, the names of the entire record will be italicized. So A Hard Day's Night should be italicized by the Beatles or American Idiot by Green Day. American Idiot should be italicized. The names of movies should be italicized. The names of airplanes. And so we, we don't mean something like Boeing 737 or Airbus 501 or something like that, which is a brand of airplane. But if an airplane has a specific name, then it is italicized. For example, Charles Lindbergh flew across the Atlantic in his plane, which was called the Spirit of St. Louis. That's what it was called. Now, it was a type of plane, but that's irrelevant because it was given a name. Another example is during World War II, many planes were given names. You know, the Sally May, the whatever. The most famous plane during World War II to have a name was probably the one that dropped the first atomic bomb on Japan, and that was called the Anola Gay. It was named after the pilot's mother. And therefore, since that plane has a name, not, not its type, but it has a name, that name gets italicized. The names of books are italicized. The names of musicals are italicized. This one's a little unusual because it seems to be that we're looking at a book. And so two slides ago I said the names of books are italicized. And isn't this like a book? And so why are you showing me again? Here's the difference. The Odyssey is not, I mean, it is a book. 
but it is also more clearly a long poem, or oftentimes we call this an epic poem. Therefore, since it is a long or epic poem, even though it is then put into a book form, it does get italicized also. So if we were writing about the Odyssey or Beowulf, both of those are truly poetry first. But since they are so long that they're the length of a book, their titles get italicized also. Operas are also italicized. And the names of ships are italicized. So the Titanic or the SS Lusitania, famous ships in our studies of history, their names also get italicized. Names of newspapers, assuming there are still newspapers left when you're listening to this podcast and haven't been run out completely by the internet, any newspaper's titles should be italicized also. Any play titles, very much like a musical, but any play titles are also italicized. Any ballet titles are also italicized. Any spacecraft also has their name italicized. So as in the Columbia, the Challenger, Apollos 1 through whatever, any of those are going to be italicized also. And so we look at this and go, okay, we can either underline or italicize big things. The book, the TV show, the movie, the album name. But within these bigger items, there are often smaller groupings. And so we use quotation marks to show the names of what I'm calling the smaller items, things that really can't stand alone. For example, if we're watching a TV show like Friends, Friends gets italicized. But if we are going to refer to a specific episode, as in the one with the turkey, that's the name of an episode. That one gets quotation marks. Another example might be in a book. The book title will be italicized. But if we're going to refer to a specific chapter within that book, and the chapter has been actually given a name, not just, you know, chapter five, but it has a name for some reason, like the day after, then that chapter's title gets quotation marks. So for example, if we listen to the album 10 Sumner's Tales by Sting, 10 Sumner's Tales is the name of an album, it gets italicized. But if we want to talk about a specific song, such as Fields of Gold, it gets quotation marks because it is, as I would say, the smaller piece of that text. And so the thing to be thinking about is, is this a large item, something that can stand on its own, such as a ship, a plane, a spacecraft, a book, movie, TV show, something like that? Then it gets italics. If it is something smaller, such as a poem, an individual song, an individual chapter or episode, those things are smaller, they need to be delineated by quotation marks. And so this isn't random. We don't just get to label these things however we're feeling that day like oh man this is an italics day everything's getting italics or everything gets quotation marks no no no. there are rules and we have to remember what gets what big items get italics or underlining and smaller items will get quotation marks just one thing bold is not an option in formal academic writing Even if we're really super excited about something, we want to make it totally stand out. We don't get the bold things. We don't even bold our titles in academic papers. We need to make sure that we are using the appropriate way of labeling. So again, italics or underlining is used for big stuff, books, movies, TV shows, ballets, musicals, those types of things. But if you would like to refer to something smaller within those, such as a chapter, a scene name, an episode name, or a song title, or a poem, those get the smaller quotation marks. And so we need to remember those rules because they're not random. But once we figure those out, our academic papers become a lot more formal and a lot more correct. 
As always, please bring in your notes and your questions to class, and we will seek to clarify anything that wasn't clear here. But thanks for listening. Have a good one, and we will see you soon.